Finally, we will take a look at the right hat and the read hat. So in the right hat, a magnetic field is produced by a circulating current that magnetizes the media. It is an electromagnet with a gap where the fringing field intersects the media. So we have some requirements on this. It has to have a large permeability to create large magnetic fields. It has to have a low coercivity so that it can be easily reversed. Uh, the one issue we can have in, in these uh, right hats is the eddy currents and that is basically solved by using high resistivity media like laminated iron aluminum nickel, cobalt chromium zirconium, cubic ferrites and permalloy. And data rate is a limiting factor for fast recording. On the other hand, for reed hats, uh, we use the magneto resistance. Magneto resistance is defined as the change in resistance when a magnetic field is applied. So you can see here MR ratio is the resistance with the magnetic field minus resistance with zero magnetic field divided by the resistance with zero magnetic field. <coughs> now early on, before 1990, uh, people relied on anisotropic magneto resistance. The typical value is 2%. This is when a field is applied parallel to the current flow, resistance increases, perpendicular to the current flow, resistance decreases. And here is why. When it is applied, the current is applied perpendicular to the magnetic field, you can see that the scattering cross-section for the electrons is low, so therefore this has a low resistance. When we apply um, the current parallel to the magnetization direction, we see high resistance because we get a large, uh, relatively larger scattering cross-section. So this is basically due to spin-orbit coupling. The conduction electrons are scattered by the unquenched part of the orbital angular momentum of 3D electrons. So we're talking about the orbitals that can be oriented with the uh, together with the spin, not the quenched ones. And when the magnetization is perpendicular to the current direction, the scattering cross-section is reduced. And alternatively, later on, giant magneto resistance was developed and it received the Nobel Prize in 2007. Uh, the, here the value is between 10 to 20 percent change in resistance. It's based on the so-called spin well structure where we have a magnetic layer that is that has a fixed orientation uh, by relying on exchange anisotropy induced by an antiferromagnetic uh, neighboring material. There is a spacer and then a free magnetic layer. The magnetization orientation can be easily switched. Since the uh, density of states of a ferromagnet is exchange split, uh, we have uh, basically different uh, resistances depending on uh, the value of the orientation of the magnetization of the free layer. If it's parallel, it has low resistance. If it's anti-parallel, it has high resistance. Uh, so one magnetic layer has its magnetization pinned using exchange bias. The other one is free to switch. Now, the version that has a tunneling barrier instead of a spacer in between these two magnetic layers is tunneling magneto resistance. There, uh, the res magneto resistance ratio can be larger than 100% using magnesium oxide barriers, for example. If you look at the future of magnetic data storage, the longitudinal recording has been replaced with perpendicular re recording, which allows terabits per inch square aerial density. Uh, the future developments include thermally assisted recording, bit pattern media, and finally three-dimensional integration of magnetic bits uh, in order to obtain more than 20 terabits per inch square data storage density. Now, as a final remark, I would like to show you an interview with Albert Furt, who got the Nobel Prize for his work on uh, giant magneto resistance together with Peter Grunberg and he's talking about the future of Spintronics. Hello, 
I'm Hamish Johnson, Hello, I'm Hamish editor Johnson, of PhysicsWorld.com. I'm here at the Royal here Society in London London for London for the Spin on Electronics, on electronics meeting, meeting, which has brought together, which has brought together leading, together leading international, international researchers, researchers in the field in of Spintronics. Spintronics, Spintronics aims Spintronics to create aims electronic, to create electronic devices, devices that exploit that both the spin, both the spin and, charge and charge of the electron. Of the electron. An early Spintronics early success, story success story is a development is a of highly sensitive magnetic sensors, which have boosted the storage capacity of hard disk drives. Drives. I'm here with Spintronics pioneer, pioneer Professor Albert Ferret of, of the University of Paris, Paris South, South at, Orsay, at Orsay, whose research whose paved research the way paved the to, way bigger, to bigger, and bigger and better hard drives. Hard drives. Thanks for joining us, today. For joining us today. Professor Fair, you, you were awarded the Nobel, Nobel Prize in Physics in 2007, 2007 for work on giant work magneto resistance done in the 1980s. 1980s. Could you describe, Could you what, describe you what you did exactly and why it was a significant, was a significant breakthrough? breakthrough? Okay, what I did. Okay. What I did. Begins, by begins by some, some the technology, technological, technological aspect of the research, research fabrication, fabrication of, uh, of multilayer. What is a multilayer? Magnetic multilayer is a stack of very very, very, very thin layer, layer of, in this of case, of chromium and iron. Iron is a magnetic is material. A magnetic and on and this on multi layer, we, we uh, um, discovered the giant magnetism effect, effect, which is the strong influence of an applied field on the resistance of this material, this multi layer. By applying a field, the electrical resistance drops, and this opens the gate to the current in the multilayer. And this is the effect, for example, that you apply in your computer when you read the hard disk. There is a multilayer in the read head of the computer, and when this read head detects a C is on a magnetic inscription, the current flows more easily, and you can detect the magnetic information.